let's look at, at an example of where we procrastinate even when it goes against our best self-interest. Let's look at the problem of retirement savings. Now, I know you guys are young and you're probably not thinking about saving for your retirement, but really, saving's pretty important. By the time you guys get old, there's no money left in Social Security, and, there's certain, and pensions will be a relic of the past. You'll be reading about it in the history books. So, in order for you to actually have money, you're going to have to save it. So what do we provide in this country? We provide something known as the Defined Contribution Plan, the 401k plan. Now, in this country, we do give people quite a few incentives to put away money for their retirement. You can take a certain percentage of your income and put it away tax-free. That's good, right, given that the government takes away so much of our money. You can also, when you put it away, your employers often match you dollar for dollar. They might match you anywhere from 50% to 250%. Think about that. If you choose not to save for your future, you are literally throwing away free money into the garbage can. So that's a lot of incentive here to actually put away money for your retirement. Well, do people actually put away money for their retirement? So. My collaborators, Gur Huberman, Wei Jiang, Amir Kaminika, and I, looked at the data, at the decisions of over 800,000 people living in the United States. They were from over 650 different institutions representing 64 different industries. Now, this was all data found from Vanguard, so they all had Vanguard options. Their plans, were determined by their institutions, and their plans offered them anywhere from two options all the way up to around 60 options. Now, 60 options may sound like a lot, but it's actually not even that much by today's standards because, you know, say for example, if you have an account with Vanguard, you could actually have up to 4,500 different options. Well, we looked at whether the number of options in the plan actually affected people's likelihood to save for their retirements. And it turned out it made a big difference. Here's what the results look like. In plans that offered you two funds, retirement participation rates were around 75%, which is still not high enough given that pensions and Social Security is going out. But in plans that offered people 60 funds, participation rates had dropped to 60%. Now, there is studies done by David Leibson at Harvard University that shows that if you give people no choice, literally automatically enroll them, well, now participation rates are anywhere between 95 and 98%. Let's look at the second consequence associated with offering people more choices. The more choices people have, the worse choices they make. So let's, look, let's stick to this example of retirement savings. I told you that the more choices people have, the less likely they are to participate and save for their futures. But I'm also showing you a whole bunch of people that actually chose to save. It's still possible that the people who did choose to save we're better off for having all these extra choices. Is that true? Well, let's look at their decisions. It turns out that the more choices people had in their 401k plans, the more likely they were to put all their money in money market accounts, the more likely they were to completely avoid stocks. Now, why is that a bad idea? Anybody? You can raise your hands. Why is that a bad idea? Okay, it goes against diversity for sure. What's wrong with money market accounts? Should you be putting all your money in money market accounts? That's right, it doesn't even grow at the rate of inflation. Not a good idea when you're talking about long-term future financial wealth. Right? 
So yes, well, in any given year, the stock market might be rather variable. When you're thinking about your investments from a long-term perspective, it does not make sense to entirely avoid stocks and to put all your money in money market accounts. Okay, but people are getting nervous. They're becoming more, one of the things, what we see as the number of options go up is people become risk averse. Money markets seem safe. People start avoiding the complicated options. Stock options are really complicated. And they certainly start avoiding the options that are the, the largest category of options, which are stocks.